Lisa from Mobile Tech Review and today we're looking at the Sony Xperia Z. Finally! Yay! Now this is the import version. This is available from, well, importers online. We got ours from techshop.us, also .ca for you Canadians and they supplied our review unit here. Anyway, it's got a 5 inch 1080p display, Mobile Bravia Engine 2, gorgeous, gorgeous display. And not such a huge phone considering it is 5 inches, really thin, 0.31 inches, glass all around, so it's awful pretty looking and very easy to clean, especially because it's water resistant. You can give this guy a little bath in the sink if you want to, scary as that is. Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 Pro 1.5 gigahertz CPU, wickedly fast, and we're going to look at it now. So this is the Sony Xperia Z Android smartphone. It's available now in Europe, not yet in the U.S. Sony now says coming soon for the Z, not just the Xperia ZL, which will have U.S. LTE bands. So interesting there. Right now it's available from importers. As I mentioned, we got ours from techshop.us. They sell import phones, and it was six, the price tag on that is $689 from them right now. Purple one, a little bit more expensive. This guy's available in your choice of black, white, or purple. Apparently purple is a little trendy and a little spendy right now. Anyway, right here, 5 inch display, full 1080 resolution, mobile Bravia 2 engine, really zingy colors. We're going to show you some videos on this so you can see just how good it looks. Sharp, obviously, great pixel density here, lovely, lovely. Certainly, it's keeping up with the Joneses, so to speak, the Galaxy S4, the HTC One, also 1080p phones with big displays can't fault it. As you can see, there's no hardware buttons here. We have soft buttons right here, which uses a little of your screen wheel to stay it up. And it's also a very thin phone at 0.31 inches. That makes it easier to handle because a 5 inch phone is not a small phone obviously, though this doesn't cut a much bigger figure than my Nokia Lumia 920 in terms of height and width, so it's not that huge either. But good looking phone, glass everywhere, even on the sides. This is supposed to be shatter resistant, rugged mineral glass, that's what Sony says. You know how glass phones are, you got to be a little careful. I'm sure that one should be careful with this clean look over here. We have our 13 megapixel camera here with LED flash, autofocus, Exmor sensor. This also does HDR not just for photo but for video which is pretty unusual. You can see a little NFC sticker right here because well it has NFC. All the ports are sealed in because it is water resistant. It's supposedly up to one meter. You can give this a little rinse in the sink. You can splash it up and life will not end. At least your phone's life won't end. So that means little sealed rubber doors for everything. Our headphone jack, for example, under that door right there. On the side, two more doors. Now, Sony does a good job of kind of integrating some of these into the design. You really have to hunt for them at first, in fact. So right here, we have our micro SD card slot. Excellent to be able to expand storage. This has 16 gigs of internal storage. Of course, you can use SD, SC, and XC cards with this to really expand storage. Here you can see this is for a charging dock. Interesting, these are obviously always exposed. There's no cover over here, but I guess that's okay in terms of getting wet because, well, Sony didn't choose to cover them. Another little door right there, and there's our micro USB port that is for charging, syncing, and so on. This supports MHL out for HDMI, for those of you who need to do that. The bottom, nothing but our little barcode right here. That little slit is the speaker. Very loud and clear speaker. Surprising for such a little hole there. And if you cover it, you can really feel the force feedback of air. I wouldn't want to blow the speaker and cover that intentionally. Volume rockers are over here. Long and thin. Actually pretty easy to feel though, so I, I like that just fine. This is our power button, which kind of looks like a fancy digital camera in a way, doesn't it? Metal. And now for our smartphone monster line, so you can compare size. This is the Xperia Z right here. This is the ZL, which basically has all the features in the same gut, slightly smaller form. Plastic back instead. We're going to have a separate review of this. We're not going to focus too much time on that. This one will be coming to the U.S. as an unlock phone with U.S. LTE bands, so that's pretty attractive right there. And then here we have the Samsung Galaxy Note 2. 5.5 inch screen, big guy right here. So let's compare the size. So side by side with the Note 2. Obviously the Note 2 5.5 inch screen is going to be a bigger phone. It's also a bit thicker phone too. Makes the Sony a little bit easier to handle though. It's not quite so large. And now we have the ZL in front of the Z and you can see it's a little bit shorter, a teeny bit narrow. Mostly the difference is in the height here. So for those of you who are very size focused, well that makes a difference. 
Now, as we focus on the phone itself and the software inside, Android Jelly Bean 4.1.2. So a pretty recent operating system version there, lightly customized by Sony. Nothing too overbearing in terms of the UI. A couple of things like they have. Say you want to get rid of an app. You want to see what the trash can looks like here. This is cute. We get the trash can at the bottom peering. See, and then the lid's going to open when we put something inside. Oh, isn't that just cute? So that's the kind of UI customizations they've done there. They've got their wireless control widgets over here pre-installed weather widget, and some Sony application widgets. Now, speaking of Sony software, there's plenty of that on here. Sony does have a pretty large ecosystem for their music offerings, for their video offerings, and for the applications. And we've seen this on previous Sony, Sony Ericsson smartphones and Sony Android tablets. They provide their own diagnostics app here with shortcut to downloads. Crackle, I've downloaded that Sony's streaming free music service right there. Facebook's preloaded on it. They have a file manager. We have our normal Google suite of applications on here, Google Plus, Google Maps, Google Navigations, all on board. They add McAfee security on here. And we have media remotes so you can control your TV. That's pretty popular these days. We see that on the HTC One and on Samsung Galaxy products as well. So that's always handy. And they do a particularly nice job of actually making it easier to control your AV gear. Less content or, um, oriented really more towards just controlling your AV gear. We've got Google Play, magazines and books on here, Office Suite for viewing MS Office documents. We've got Sony's Music Unlimited service. They do have a streaming music service. Obviously, they would love if you use it. We've got their movie player on board. We also have Google Play movies on here. Sony's Social Life, social networking application. I haven't found that it's really any better than using your favorite app of choice for doing that, but it's there. Sony Car, which is pretty much like every car interface that you've ever seen for driving kind of safely. Just giant icons for your major functions that you might want to use when you're in your car, assuming it's legal to do that wherever you are. We've got Neo Reader, which is a square barcode reader on board. Play Memories for cloud sharing of your content. Play Now. A lot of, again, Sony stuff is here, but one thing that's pretty neat is we have the little PlayStation application on here. PlayStation Mobile. So for those of you who are into those PlayStation games, here they are. And we can see the selection of games here. We'll check that out by category. It looks pretty much like the same thing you're going to see on your Vita or your PlayStation 3 UI. We'll look at action games. A lot of choices there. So for those of you who have been waiting for PlayStation mobile integration into your phone, well, here it is. And the phone also has an FM radio and a backup and restore application. Now you can always download backup and restore applications from the Google Play Store, but it's kind of nice to get one actually included. You can see we have a lot of benchmark applications loaded on here, and this runs on a Qualcomm S4 Pro quad core 1.5 gigahertz CPU. That's pretty impressive stuff. It has two gigs of RAM. It benchmarks very well. It feels very fast as well. On Quadrant, it scored 7851. Very nice. Usually 5000 is pretty good for your dual-core Snapdragon CPU, so certainly a significant improvement there. 20,403 on Antutu Benchmark. Around 11,000 is usually pretty awesome for Antutu, so really good there. GL Benchmark 2.7, their Egypt HD 2.5 test, 32 frames per second on-screen and off-screen, and SunSpider did 1306, which is about top of the line right now for Android phones. All good stuff. This comes with the Chrome web browser, which is pretty much standard for newer Android products running Jelly Bean. There is no older internet web browser on here. That means that loading Adobe Flash, not so much unless you want to put the boat browser on here, some third-party browser that still supports Flash. And of course, you'd have to sideload Flash as well. Audio quality, we're using the Walkman application right now. Listen to that. That's nice for a phone. Really good. Of course, you can use headphones with this, Bluetooth speakers, Bluetooth headsets, whatever you want with it. But I have to say, the speaker on this is quite loud. Right now, we're at about two thirds volume and just nice and full sounding. Not tinny, not harsh, not buzzing, none of that stuff. Good times. Now, let's check out video and we can see how really good this screen is. And now we're in the Sony Movies application. That's because most of you have seen the Google Play Movie Player. So we're going to check out our movies and we're going to go for a movie trailer that's 1080p matching the screen. And we'll give the Avengers a try. That has a lot of dynamic range for the audio as well, so get to hear that.
Oh, look at the colors here. Oh my gosh, they really pop. Really vibrant. Plenty bright, too. Great sounding audio there. And again, the colors, I mean, we use this, this movie trailer all the time to test phones and, and I have it memorized. I've never seen the fireballs zing that much visually on here. And even the dark scenes look pretty bright. We're using auto brightness right now. Now this has auto brightness and like the iPhone, you can actually set the level a range within that for auto brightness. So we don't even have the brightness cranked up all the way here. And it's just looking really nice. So pleasant experience. Certainly as a multimedia phone, this is lovely stuff. Of course, this guy is a phone too, and here you can see a big on-screen dialer right here. Pretty easy to use, and the usual shortcuts to our favorites, to our, all of our contacts, to our call log. Voice quality on this, very good for incoming and outgoing voice. Nice and loud and clear. We've been testing this on AT&T with our AT&T Micro Simpsons. This is an unlocked phone. You can put as whatever SIM you want in it. Really good sounding call quality. Now, in terms of data speeds, you can see some of our speed test results that we've gotten here. So there are our speeds, 7.7 .7 megabit down, 1.1 up, 6.5, a little bit better than that down, a little bit better than one up, and so on. So pretty good speeds, not LTE speeds, but really, actually, I, I find that's pretty good for downloading applications and loading web pages. It works well. It's up to you whether you want to live with or without LTE, though. This is a GSM quad band world phone, so for those of you folks who are Sprint and Verizon customers, this is not the phone for you. Those use CDMA. This is not a CDMA phone. In terms of additional UI customizations, most of what Sony's done here I actually really like. If you want to do a quick swipe down, there you have quick access to your wireless radios, and then you can get to your all settings right here. Standard list of things. We have Xperia settings right here, throw settings. This has DLNA, so in theory, if you have a Sony product that supports it, you can just throw media, so to speak. It'll be represented on screen at your Wi-Fi equipped DLNA capable Sony multimedia equipment, AV gear. You can turn screen mirroring on or off for external displays, get additional uses, info, all the usual stuff right there. 16 gigs of storage again inside. Expandable, obviously, with a micro SD card slot. Now, let's see. Since this is a quad-core fast CPU with 2 gigs of RAM, a really nice display. Let's check out Real Racing 3 and see how well that goes. So here we are inside of Real Racing 3, and we're going to look for some of those Tegra 3 kind of features you would hope to see maybe on this, too, and you'll get them, like rear view mirror images. And we're going to race with our, well, sad little beginner Nissan Silvia car, but we'll do our best. Lovely looking, nice reflections right there on the car. Sharp. There's our rear view mirror image in there. It's very smoothly. The frame rate is just great on this. Accelerometer based controls, excellent. And there we have it. So that's Real Racing 3. Good stuff. Now for our camera, really excellent 13 megapixel camera, XMR sensor on here, HDR, and we're using the, the auto settings right here, which Sony, well, kind of egotistically calls a superior auto, or intelligent auto plus. Those of you who have a Sony NEX camera will find a lot of this very familiar up here. And you can see we have normal video burst mode, picture effect, panorama sweeps, changing our screen resolution, and switching to the front video camera, which we're going to stick with the back one right now. And if you want to record video, you hit the little video record symbol. If you want to take a photo, you take a photo. So it's interesting, you have both on, going on at once. And we can actually shoot a video right here of our little toy. And we can snap pictures at the same time. And it does that silently, so you don't pick up shutter clicks while you're recording video. 
all very quick. Just regular see, touch focus right there. We're pretty close to our subject right now. It's giving a little bit of trouble, but it's doing just fine right now. And say we want to go to burst mode. And now we're using the Sony album application. Here's our many burst mode pictures of our cute little toy. Some more exciting outdoor pictures to take a look at right there. There's taken in cloudy lighting. Very nice contrast, very natural. No white out on the rocks right there. Flower against the rocks. Usually these rocks cause cameras problems, so really great job with exposure. Nice sharpness, not over sharpened. Colors are actually accurate on this. Also a nice picture with a good amount of detail. I, often we see the leaves in the tree get over sharpened. This is fairly natural looking. And short video. Here's a test of video. Fairly smooth. I don't hold my hand that smooth, but in terms of frame rate, it's quite good. Very nice camera. If you're a shutter bug, you're going to like this camera a lot. Battery life? Well, as you can see, this guy is sealed, isn't it? There's no way you can take that battery out. 2400 milliamp battery. Battery life is not the good point of this phone. That's a fairly good capacity battery for our thin and high-powered friend here. And there is a stamina mode that helps mostly with standby times. You can disable background networking activities and things like that. But honestly, this lasts just about a day. And that's with... Mm, low to moderate use. Real racing, you can just about watch the battery drop a percent a minute. Ouch. So, yeah, th th that's something about this phone. If you're going to be away from an outlet for an entire day at a time and you're going to use especially things like the GPS or streaming video on it, it's going to be a problem if you can't plug it in. Display viewing angles are pretty good. Not as wide as some other phones we've seen. You can see it starts to distort the color a little bit, but honestly, the way most of us use phones, aiming it pretty much within a reasonable angle, sort of at your face, you're going to like it. I'm not going to complain too much about it, but it doesn't have that... Wow, you lay it on its side like the iPhone or the HTC One and it looks like it's painted on kind of thing. It looks a little like glass. Well, it is glass. Phone has dual band Wi-Fi, 802.11bgn, a GPS with GLONASS, Bluetooth 4.0, and NFC. So that's the Sony Xperia Z. Really, really a nice Android smartphone. The problem is right now there's an awful lot of competition. We have the wonderful HTC One. We have the Samsung Galaxy S4 coming. So this guy has, well, it's had a bit of an uphill battle there fighting those others. But you know what? I'd say that it really can hold its own. A stunning display on this. Really thin. Feels great in the hand. The only drawback for us folks in the U.S. and Canada is it doesn't have LTE in our band. So we're at HSPA Plus for not quite as wickedly fast data. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full review of the Xperia Z, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.